What's going on, everybody? I'm Tank, and this is another episode of Roadie Reactions Rewind. Get with this. Welcome back, everybody, to another edition of my Rewind series, where I get to share with you guys basically the songs of my life. These are all songs that are super important to me in some way. I might have grown up on them, I might have an emotional connection to them, or they just influenced me or impacted my musical taste growing up. And in today's episode, we're going to be covering a band that is super special to me, and I felt as though it was important that I shared this. Today, we're going to be talking about Children of Bodom. And Children of Bodom is one of the bands that I consider my big three of the European metal bands that first got me into that sound that was something different than what I was hearing in the US. The other two bands being In Flames and Dimmu Borgir. Now, I didn't know when I was going to make this video. I really didn't because I'm going to assume that a lot of people that are watching this are very aware of the semi-recent passing of Children of Bodom's frontman and lead guitarist, Alexi Laiho. And right when it happened, everybody was messaging and commenting saying, I need to do a reaction right away. And I just didn't want to do it, man. I felt as though it was kind of cheap to do a reaction or do a video based on that right when it happened because it would be getting a lot of views and stuff like that. And I'm not judging the other people that did that. They may very well have exposed this band to a lot of people that never knew about them. But for me personally, because it was very emotional, I just felt like I couldn't do it at that time. But now that I'm doing this rewind series, I feel as though this has to be done. It feels very appropriate and it feels like the right time. Now, I remember waking up the morning that Alexi's passing was announced. I woke up and checked my email, had an email from a friend at Napalm Records with a press release that said Alexi had passed away. I couldn't believe it. I really, really couldn't at first. And, you know, I was really, really happy. And I was going to say surprised, but it wasn't surprising. I was really happy and it was heartwarming to see the musical community in their home country of Finland and all over the world, really paying tribute to Alexi and what he did for the music scene. And this video might be a little emotional and I apologize if it's too much. We're here to talk about gear and production and have a good time, but man, it's just, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about this other than to just share with you how I discovered them. It was about the year 2000, I was 13 years old. One of my friend's older brothers had their CD, Follow the Reaper, and I heard him playing it, and I really liked it, but I didn't get into them right then. It wasn't until a few years later in 2003, when I was about 15 or 16, where I heard Hate Crew Death Roll, and I was hooked right there, man. That is still a CD that I can listen to from start to finish and enjoy every second of it. And the song that I'm gonna share with you guys today is actually the first song from that record that I heard and the song that really made its stamp in my musical history and what I loved growing up. So, without wasting any more time, I will link this original video in the description below. Today we're going to be listening to Children of Bodom, and we're going to be listening to the song Hate Crew Death Roll live in Stockholm, Sweden. Let's go! So why don't you show the whole fucking world if you are the real motherfucking hate crew? Are you the real motherfucking hate crew? That's why the next one's gonna be called Hate Crew Death Row. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this.
<laughs> this this is whew, this is hard. This is a lot harder than I thought it would be just to watch this. <sighs> All right. So from a production standpoint, um, I know this was shot for live DVD. I've actually never seen this DVD. Um, 2005, 2006-ish. You know, I don't think they're playing to a click track or using tracks of any kind, but when that intro was going, I didn't see their keyboard doing anything, but not as high a quality of video in terms of, you know, I think there's probably like 480p or something, but... Um, I couldn't really see it, but the production setup is really, really cool, man. There's a lot of awesome, intricate stuff going on. I like this COB hanging in the background that's made of parkhand lighting that they can dim and they probably have parts of the set where they're randomly flashing it and stuff. Uh, it looks like they have a car on stage. Now, what I would imagine that is without seeing the rest of it so far is that it's probably halved out. So it's the front half of a car that they use as the stage set. I've seen like a lot of barrels and stuff on stage. It's a cool looking set, man. And it matches the vibe of them very well. Awesome gear in here to talk about too, but let's listen to some more. We'll get to that later. Before the solo, let's talk some gear, because this is one of my favorite Alexi solos. So Alexi, for as long as I remember, always had an endorsement with ESP. And we talk about ESP a lot on here. But the guitar that he's playing is his signature. He's had a lot of different signatures over the years, but they're always based on that model. Kind of looks like a Randy Rhodes signature. Same body style. Um, I think that one's maybe a hair bigger than a Randy Rhodes style, though. But that one, if I'm not mistaken, is the ESP Alexi 600, and I think they called that one the Scythe, that white body with the black pinstripe on it. Um, Pickups-wise, it's really interesting because a lot of models of ESP that you see, and especially with this style of music, have active pickups. And that's actually a passive EMG pickup. I believe it's a signature of his that EMG made. And the difference between active and passive is the electronics. The simplest way I can put it is that passive doesn't need any extra power. Active actually needs to have a nine volt battery or two in there to power the electronics in there. The other interesting thing is there's no tone control on the guitar. There's just one volume knob. So all the tone that he needs from that guitar by itself is just in that pickup and then whatever effects and stuff that he's using on top of it. Uh, Floyd Rose bridge setup on there. Uh, we've talked about Floyd Rose a lot, but let's talk a little more. Floyd Roses are interesting because they're a locking bridge and nut system that basically, basically what it does is shorten the effective length of the string. So it helps with tuning, sustain, stability, tone, all that stuff. Um, pain in the ass to restring Floyd Rose bridges, but they do work very well especially because he's doing so many bends on that whammy bar and stuff. Let's listen to the solo. We'll talk about the rest of the gear after.
Dude, he is such a good guitar player. man he is such a good guitar player i i legitimately did not think this was going to be this hard to watch all right let's go Interesting. That is different from the CD version. So let's talk about the rest of the gear. Stage left guitar player is rocking another ESP. I'm not 100% sure what model that is. It looks like an MX, which is kind of their Explorer looking guitar, but it's got a different body. I think it was, oh, I can't remember the name of it. It's an older model. I think it's called a Roadstar, maybe. I'm going to look it up and find out more because I don't think I've seen one of those in person or on video maybe ever. I've seen a couple pictures of it in promo shots, but that's it. The bass player on the other side, I know he had a signature ESP LTD. I'm assuming that's it because it very much looks like the ESP Forest or F series, but it's a little different in the body style. So I'm going to have to look that one up and see exactly what he's playing too. Uh, drummer was playing Pearl everything for drums and hardware. I've seen the Pearl logos on the hardware. Um, at this point in their career, he may be playing like a custom master built kit. Um, symbol wise, I believe he was playing vinyl. If I, I'm like, I'm, I'm having a hard time remembering stuff because this is so heavy for me right now, heavy emotionally. Um, but man, this, this sounds really, really good, especially for a band like this that has so many intricate parts. I've seen a lot of like thrashy metal bands that just aren't super tight. Um, and this is one performance. They may have their bad nights. They may have their good nights. And since it's a DVD, it could have been edited in post, but I love it. So I'm probably going to buy this whole DVD if I can find it after this. Let's hear what this was going into. This is cool. I love these live improvs like this. Let's go talk more about that. I never would have thought that was going to be that 
difficult emotionally to watch. I knew it was going to be, but not that difficult. Um, maybe it's because it's so recent. There are a lot of other musicians I love who have passed away that I can listen to their music now and it doesn't do that to me, but it also could be that this was just a very special band. This brought me back to being a teenager, man. It's This is the first time in a while I've listened to this and it did. It brought me back, man. And again, that's just, I love doing this series for those reasons. And I realized when I was talking about gear, they do have a keyboard player that I didn't mention mainly because I couldn't tell what kind of gear he was using. But I know a question that I often get is, why the tilted keyboard with a lot of these? You see Tomas from Nightwish doing that a lot. It's just easier on the wrist to have down like that rather than up like this the whole time. Man, I honestly, I think a lot of the people that are watching this are already familiar with Children of Bodom, but I really hope there are some people that are watching this for the first time that are intrigued enough by this band to really get into it because these guys are something special, man. I love their music. I always have. I always will. And thank you guys very much for taking the time to watch this video. If you're new here, feel free to click subscribe. I release new videos all the time. So if you turn your alerts on, you might get notified by YouTube, but you probably won't. If you liked this video, I would greatly appreciate the like, as it does help my channel. But if you disliked it, you're free to, man. Thank you for watching this time. No big deal. Click dislike. Move on. I'm also on a ton of different social media. I have a Discord server that I hang out on often. I have a Twitch that I stream video games on from time to time. And if you're interested in any of that, I will link that in the description below. My handle on everything social media is at Tank the Tech. Thank you so very much for watching this. I will be back very soon with another episode of Roadie Reactions.